It was really hard because my mother meant everything to me and she just drove me to the school the day before and now she's dying. I remember when I heard that over the telephone, I went up to the class, you know, to my room and sat down and I was crying and crying and crying. And, and then I prayed to God, God, if you are there, if you are there, pray, please let my mom survive. Do something, do something. And now I came to him and he had his Bible laying on the bed. And I was like, a Bible? Tommy, this is a Bible. What do you do with a Bible? You are young, you have a life. Into my body and fall to my floor. Into a body. I fall to the floor. I was afraid. I don't know what happened, but I experienced the power of God through my whole body. And when I stood up, I was like, what was that? You are there. Not if you are there. It's like, you are there. But who are you? And, and my life got changed. And, and the first thing was I, I, I stopped sinning. I could not go on sinning. And I had the church and I have the Bible. I have my life and I had the Bible. In the church eyes, I was radical. But in my own eyes and in the Bible, I was I'm not radical because there was no food. I give you everything I have the next year. I do everything the next year. If I have not bear fruit, when this year no more, take my life, I want to die. And so in the beginning of January, I took every food away and decided to fast 40 days. I experienced a fear of God I've never experienced before. And one time I came to that point, I have sinned against the Holy Spirit, I'm lost, I cannot experience salvation. It's over and over me. Because I saw how much a sin I was, I saw how much I had messed up. And from that day on, I start to see the power of God. If, if I look at my life before I, I met God, I think there was nothing special with it. In many ways, I was grown up in a somehow good family. My father was, uh, he had a business where he was fixing housing with painting and and something, and my mother, she was working uh, in a bank. And I grew up with two big brothers. Uh, I was baptized as a child in the Lutheran church as a baby, and I was confirmed when I was around 14 years old. And when I got confirmed, it was tradition. Like, like many other people in Denmark, I, I did it because I get a lot of gifts. I did get it because I got a party, and, and because now I was an uh, adult. I was confirmed and I went from the children round into the adult round. This is what, what we say in Denmark. So I didn't put so much God into it. Uh, I was in church a few times when I was confirmed, but it was, not, it was not me. It was not something I was interested in to sit in an old church building from in the end of uh, 1700s and, and sit there and sing some old psalms and, and do other things. So it was not me. Uh, so after I got confirmed as 14 years old, I, I continued in school. In school I had uh, different problems. Uh, when I was younger I had a speaking problem, a speaking mistake, where I had problems saying my own name. Uh, my name is Torben Søndergaard, but at that time when I was really younger I couldn't say Torben Søndergaard, I said Gorben Gønnergaard. I couldn't pronounce my own name. So in the small uh, years as a kid in school I was having a special teacher who was teaching me to pronounce words and to speak and because of that I was not together with other boys and girls in the class and I was always behind when it comes to learning to read and learning to write. Um, I also was a uh, uh, I weighed some more kilos when I was a kid so I was teased a lot because I was fat, I was big I could not read, I could not write, and I was not good at school. So because of that, and speaking mistake, and because of all of that, I was teased a lot. So, so I had a okay childhood. It was hard. I was a kid. I had a lot of problems. I was not the public guy in the class. Um, and it was life. And, and there was some times where I went home from school crying because life was life. And I remember on my way home from school, I, I sometimes bought a 
bag of chips and coke. I often did that almost every week. And then went home and sat, sat and saw TV many hours every day. And in many ways dream about something more, something else. But I didn't know what and how and, and yeah. Uh, when I was after, when I left school, uh, the first years of school, I, I, I have no self-confidence. I didn't know what to do with my life. I remember I did a report in school about cancer, sickness cancer. And I, I was always afraid of dying. And, and, and I remember I talked with a girl in our class about it. And she was the popular girl. I was not, but she, she felt sorry for me, so she was nice with me. And I remember one of the last days in school, I asked her, her name is Brit. I asked her, Brit, Brit, what about you? Are you not afraid of dying? Are you not afraid of getting cancer? She said, no. Come on, Tom, we are young. We can, we can experience a lot of things in life. I want to travel. I want to see a lot of things. And I envy her because she had something I did not have. She had a faith in the future and she, she, she had a self-confidence. And, and I didn't have any of that. Then uh, I left that school and I went to like a boarding school. And a few months after the boarding school, I heard that her, my friend, had got cancer. And a few months later, again, she had died. She died of cancer. So when I was sitting talking with her after the last day in school about life and cancer, she was not afraid of anything. But she already had cancer at that time. And a half year after, she, was, she had died. And it was shocking for me. Like, OK, I've lost her as a friend. In the same time at a boarding school, one day my brother called me. It was my big brother. He called me and said, uh, is, uh, my mother had just, in the bank where she was working, she had just fallen down with a uh, stroke. And they were not sure she was going to survive. And I was 16 years old at that time, or 15, yeah, 16. And it was really hard because my mother meant everything to me. And she just drove me to the school the day before. And now she's dying. I remember when I heard that over the telephone, I went up to the class, you know, to my room and sat down and I was crying and crying and crying. And, and then I prayed to God. I'm, I've never like done it like that before, but now I prayed and it was like life and death. Now, now it was more than, okay, I prayed before, but it was like I was doing the Lord, Lord's Prayer maybe one time or three times, not two times because it meant bad luck. So I, I used the Lord's Prayer as a tradition, as a religious thing to do. But this time when my mother was dying, I prayed from my whole heart, like, God, if you are there, if you are there, please let my mom survive. Do something, do something. I remember when I prayed, it was like he was not there. It was like there was a ceiling between me and God. I was praying to the ceiling. And I thought about if I should go outside where there was no ceiling between me and God. But then I'd be like, the universe is so big. God is so far away. Can, can, is he there? And it was really hard, and, and I prayed I didn't feel he was there, and my mother got sick, and she got paralyzed, and she suddenly spent one and a half year at the hospital, and I celebrate New Year and Christmas at the hospital. And I remember one day at 16 years old, I was standing looking out the door at the window at the hospital and seeing the cars driving on the street, and I was thinking, is this life? Are we just here to die? Are we just here to experience bad things, and then it's all over? And I was like, but God is not there, because I tried, I prayed, and he did not answer. So I took God, religious faith, the small faith I have, and throw it away, and thought, OK, that's nothing. And then I, I started to, uh, after boarding school, I, I started to work as a baker. And I was good at that, and I got some self-confidence, because I was good at using my hands. Uh, and, and I started to drink a lot, go to parties, and get, got too much to drink. And, and in the end of it, I, I also started to fight a little. It's not because I was a bad boy. I was a, I was a soft guy. I've always been a soft guy. I grew up in, in have love for my mom and dad. But, but hard was, last, life was hard. My mom was sick, and I had a girlfriend, and she was me unfaithful. And I was her unfaithful to... Uh, have events in. 
And and then um, I went start to fight in the city. I got too much to drink, and and at one time there was like a big guy fighting against a small guy. I went up to a big guy to find somebody on your own size, and it was me. And 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 I started to fight, and and I I did different things I don't want to do when I was strong. I stole some bicycles because I don't want to walk home. I, one time I took the car where I was really drunk. I was not able to drive, but I drove anyway. And 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 I was I get got the wrong friends, and I was like tired of life, frustrated about my mom's sickness, my my own life, my girlfriend's life, and and our relationship, and and what I was doing. I I, I was always dreaming about something else, but I didn't know what. But one night I was working in the baker. In a bakery where I was working, I look up in the air and I say, come on, God. God, there must be more than life than this. If you are there, come and take me. And I said, I have maybe a half, one and a half year between my mother's sickness and that where I didn't believe in God. But I came to that point, there must be something. There must be something. So I said, God, if you are there, come and take me. I want to know you. Are you there? Come and take me. But when I was saying, come and take me, it was just a desperation after him after something but in my mind I was thinking of UFO will come and beam me up and fly away with me I was thinking of big angel will come and lift me up I was thinking of a hand come down and ride on the walls and I've seen a lot of videos of, of about the supernatural on TV and and I wanted something supernatural I want something that was real I didn't want what I got when I co confirmed in the state church but because it was not real it was just religion it was tradition and I didn't want tradition. I don't, didn't want to sit in church every Sunday and believe in something. And then one day I'm going to die and I'm going to find out that everything I believed was wrong. And I have wasted my life sitting in church every Sunday. It was my idea and I didn't want that. I want something different. I want something I could touch. Like this table that was real. So when I said, God, if you're there, come and take me, it was not Christianity. It was not Jesus. It was not religion. It was more something supernatural something and I said it and I was surprised it just came out of me like that um, a few days later I met a guy not a met a guy I, I was together with my good friend our neighbor and we had grown up and we were together and we had seen a lot of movies together about different things new age things spiritual things and aliens and and uh, ghosts and a lot of things and, and sometimes talked about that and now I came to him, and he had his Bible laying on the bed. And I was like, a Bible? We had never talked about God like that, and he had, and especially not the Bible. And, and I said to him, Tommy, this is a Bible. What do you do with a Bible? You are young, you have a life. Because I thought Bible was for old people sitting in a church who didn't know other, other things to, uh, had other things to do. So I was like, a Bible, what do you do with that? And he said, Tommy, I met God. I have experienced Jesus. And I was like, what? No, no way. No, you can believe in God, but you cannot experience it. I have. I have experienced Jesus. And he told me how he experienced Jesus. In many ways, it was some of the things I've been dreaming of more, something that's real. But I was really skeptical. I was like, he was brainwashed. He was started in a sect. They were just out of, after his money. and. I, as the smart guy, need to make him normal again. It was my idea. So, so I listened a lot to him and talked a lot with him about it in that period, but it was more to figure out where he was wrong so I could make him normal again. Uh, but he told me about Jesus and about what he had experienced, and, and we talked about it. And, and a few days later, there was a program on TV uh, about from a church about something with God and Jesus and so on and say okay let's sit, uh, see it together and we saw it together and when we saw that program together I was thinking like okay let's see now I can find something wrong in, in all of this but in that program there was a girl who got prayed for after she got prayed for you saw of a tear running down her cheek when I saw that it did something in me because here I had my friend who have told, he have experienced God. That girl have experienced something, something I could not see, but she have experienced something. Otherwise, she not start to cry. And here I was, baptized in the Lutheran church, 
confirm as a kid, thought I was a Christian because in my mind, to be a Christian is to be baptized, confirm, be a good person, live in Denmark. <laughs> and I thought I was a Christian, but I've never experienced God. I, and I was like, what is this? And I, I did like this, like, what is it all about? I've never experienced God. So I said to my friend, Tommy, if you can experience God, I will have it. And he looked at me like, Okay, and really surprised because I was, I had been skeptical until that day. So I went with him in church the day after, and I came in, I've never been in anything else at the Lutheran church, and, and people was worshiping God, I've never seen that, people was lifting their hands, and people was praying in tongues, and I was like, okay, now I'm really on another planet, because those people are crazy, and like, what is it? But I felt they had something I did not have. And, and the guy who was preaching, uh, talking about Jesus that day, he asked if somebody wants to repent and, and give their life to Jesus. I didn't know so much about it at that time, but my heart beating really fast. I felt like, it's me, and like, I want it, I want it. And, and I went up and, and prayed and talked with them, and, and they prayed for me, and the Holy Spirit came over me. It was like the Holy Ghost just came into my body. I was standing with my eyes closed. I didn't know what to expect. I never experienced anything before. And it was like a light came into my body and fall to my, into my body. I fall to the floor. I was afraid. I don't know what happened, but I experienced the power of God through my whole body. And when I stood up, I was like, what was that? And somebody said, congratulations, Tom. Like, you have you are experienced God. You are born again. I'm like, what is it? I don't know what it was, but something had happened. And when I jumped on my bicycle and went home that day, I was looking up in the air and said, Hi. It was like before as a bay in the bakery, I was saying, God, are you there? Now it was like, you are there. Not if you are there. It's like, you are there. But who are you? I don't know him. I experienced him. He had touched me. He had done something in me, but I don't know him. And I was like, whoa, and I was like, what happened with me? And the first thing was, like, I was always afraid of dying, but now I was not afraid anymore. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to die one day. I'm going to go home. And like, what is happening? And I came home and, and I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, what is happening with me? And, and my life was changed from that moment on. The fear of dying was gone. Uh, I experienced a peace inside. I experienced a strength inside. Like now it was like I could take the whole world. Before I still didn't have much self-confidence. I didn't know what to do with my life. I was never good at reading and writing. I was never good at school. I was not that at that time still. But I just knew nothing is impossible. Like nothing is impossible. I didn't know the scripts. I didn't know that the Bible said nothing is impossible for those who believe. But I just knew inside of me, nothing is impossible. And, and my life got changed. And, and the first thing was I, I, I stopped sinning. I could not go on sinning. I was used to swear, cursing a lot. As soon as I did it, it tastes wrong. I cannot do it. My girlfriend came to me. I went to bed with her as I was used to when I did that. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. I cannot do it anymore. I cannot do it. And I just repented because I could not go on sinning. Why? Because the seed of God was inside of me, as the Bible says. And I didn't read it in the Bible. It was so strong because now I know the Scripture. Now I know the Word of God. But I experienced the life before I got the Bible. I experienced the true life, the true repentance. The Holy Spirit changed my life. And then later I read it. So when I got the Word, whoa! No fear of dying. This is what I've experienced. Whoa, cannot go on sinning. This is what I experienced. Hey, you can now see the truth. This is what I experienced. You can do anything. This is what I experienced. So the, life be the Bible become alive to me because it was not only a book people talk about and should believe in. I have experienced it. I have felt in my body. And I repent and I say, God, I cannot live in sin anymore. I want to live for you. And I, I stopped uh, also going to bed with my girlfriend there and I said, God, Next time I'm going to be with a girl, it's going to be, be my wife on honeymoon. You have to show me who's going to be my wife. And a few months later, I was to a big concert, Christian concert, and there God spoke to me for the first time, like really, really clear. I heard God said in the middle of the concert, Tom, the one who's standing behind you, she's going to be your wife someday. I'm like, wow. 
And I turned around and I saw her, a girl among 400, 500 people. And, I, and when I saw her, I just knew as my wife, this is, this is the one God had for me. And, uh, and, and I turned around and saw her and, and it was really incredible. And I knew it's my wife someday. I had to hurry home after that concert, after that meeting, because I was driving with a friend. It was two hours from where I was living. But I jumped in the car and drove with him home, and I said, I was so excited, I said, Michael, I've just met my wife. I don't know her name, I don't know where she's from, I don't know how old she is, I don't know anything about her. I didn't talk with her, I only saw her and smiled to her. But that God has said, that girl in that dress is one day going to be my wife. And I came home and said, God, you have to put us together. I don't know where she's from in Denmark, I don't know her name, I don't know anything about her. But I just knew God is in control. Three months later, I was at another meeting and suddenly I saw her again. And I got to know her and, and yeah, now we have been married almost 20 years and we had three children because God brought us together. And, and we didn't go to bed with each other before we was married. Why? Because the chains of God, the word of God was inside of me, inside of us, so we could not go on sinning. And, and, and it was like our life in the beginning, it was my, my beginning. and, and um, I start to see God, I start to, to I, I wanted to serve God and I believe every, every born again believer had that desire, God use me, I want to do something, I had it also, but how, where, and the only thing I, I still knew of Christianity, I've experienced God, but the only thing I knew was the church I came in and the, and I was not a worshiper. I have never been able to sing music. It's, it's not my thing. So I could not be part of a worship meeting. Uh, I was new in the faith, so I was not allowed to stand and preach and teach the word. So it was also not something I could not do. So, so what to do? I could be an usher. I could help greet with the doors and say, welcome, and get in money for the offering. And it was what I did, because it was the only way I know how to serve in that church. And I did it, and it was, it was good. It, it, I, I, I served. But very short, I see that today, that in very short time I came into a church system, into a mindset that's so unbiblical, that's so wrong. And I started to be more and more frustrated, and I experienced the life start to come out of me. The, the desire start to slowly come out of me. And, and, and um, after I got married with my wife and we were in that church, uh, after a year or two years, I started to see the people in the church through the eyes of God and through the, what the Bible says about bearing fruit. And I saw that they were doing nothing. They, they were sitting there, many of them lovely people have been on Bible school one, two years, who know a lot, they have a lot of knowledge, but they were doing nothing. They were sitting there Sunday after Sunday, Sunday after Sunday. And it was like God opened our eyes at that time and I saw, if I'm continuing here, if I'm continuing this church, I'm going to end up like them. I'm going to die. Because to fall away is to not, fall away is not to leave church, fall away is to leave the first love. And, and many people have fallen away many years before they leave church. But we only see the problem when they leave church. No, the problem is when they leave the first love. And I saw that those people was active in church, was, was not on fire, didn't love God. Well, the, the, what they fill themselves with, what they saw on TV, what they talk about, what your heart is filled with, is your mouth, mouth is running over with. There was no, no life. I was the radical guy. And, and, and there was no life there. So me and my wife, we, uh, we, we fled church. We fled it. Because we like, if we are not coming away from here, we are going to die. And we are just so desperate of coming away from that church suddenly. And then I heard that in another city they were doing a church plan. And, and, and it ended up, we left everything and we moved to that city to help some young people doing a church plan. And again, we were young. We were in the beginning of 2022, I think, at that time. And we have no experience with church planning. We have no experience with discipleship. The only thing we have experience with was sitting in church and doing church things. So we were there starting a church with them. It was not a lot of good fruits. It was hard. After a year there, we decided, no, it's, it's, we, we, it's not us. So we left that city, moved to another city again with my old youth pastor. And, and, and we worked with him in that city. And there we start a new church again. 
Um, and in that period, I, I started to really get frustrated about my life because I loved Jesus. I was on fire, but there was no fruit. There was no fruit. I have designed for those who believe. Yeah, I speak in tongues, but I never heal the sick. I never cast out demons. I've never gone out and led somebody to Christ. I have never baptized anybody. I've never have the experience I read in the Bible, the, the book of Acts. And like on one side we have the church I knew and on one side we have the Bible. But because in the beginning I experienced the life and I experienced the life that and I read that in the Bible, I knew the Bible was the word of God. And it should be normal, not only when it comes to that and that, but when it comes to everything. If some of them is, the, is half of them is the right thing, everything is the right. Everything is the truth. Not only speaking in tongues, but he in the sick, cast out demons, lean people to Christ, be led by the Holy Spirit, bearing fruit. And I had the church and I have the Bible. I have my life and I had the Bible. In the church eyes, I was radical. But in my own eyes and in the Bible, I was, I was not radical for, because there was no fruit. And I became so desperate and I became so tired. And there, in the, around year 2000, I decided one day, I, I'm like, something needs to happen. Something radical needs to happen because I've been Christian for six years now, but I have no fruit. I've come in church six years, no fruit. And then I read one day about the fig tree, where Jesus said, cut it off, cut it down. It had been standing now three years without bearing fruit. And the parable is saying, oh, let's give it one more year. If it do not bear fruit next year, then we can cut it off and cut it down. And when I read about that fig tree who had been there three years without bearing fruit, I saw it was my, me, my life. But I have not been staying in three years. I've been staying in six years without bearing fruit. And I said, God, you give that fig tree one more year. Give me one more year. No, God, I give you one year. I give you everything I have the next year. I do everything the next year. If I have not bear fruit when this year and over, take my life. I want to die. I said that. I'm like, take my life. I, I... And it can seem radical, but the word is radical. The Bible is radical. Jesus said that. Every branch of me who do not bear fruit, I cut it off and throw it away and burn it in fire. And, and every branch who bear fruit, I prune it, prune it so it bear more fruit. I said, God, I give you one year. And so in the beginning of January, I took every food away and decided to fast 40 days. I want to bear fruit. So I started 40 days fast, something I never heard about people was doing. And through that 40 day fast, I fast because I want to bear fruit, but it was interesting. It was not the fruit God started with. He started with my life. I experienced a fear of God I've never experienced before. I experienced a repentance I've never experienced before. I experienced a holiness I've never experienced before. And one time I came to that point, I have sinned against the Holy Spirit, I'm lost, I cannot experience salvation. It's over and out for me. Because I saw how much a sin I was. I saw how much I have messed up. And it was really hard. And, and, and there was a few days where I went through like a deep, 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 like, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm fire, hell is burning all under me, I'm lost, I'm going to hell, I'm, I'm lost forever. And like, like, almost like we read in, in, in revival histories, and I went through that, I'm like, what is happening here? I couldn't eat, I couldn't steal, I couldn't do anything. Um, but there I experienced the grace of God, I experienced, whoa, I am forgiving, I'm still forgiving, I'm still on the road. I should not take it for granted. I'm still on the work. I should work on my salvation with fear and tremble. I should really keep me close to Jesus in all times. And, and, and I got a lot of revelation in that period of fasting. And, and I experienced a freedom from sin I've never experienced before. It was like Romans 6, 7, 8. I was studying them a lot. And I saw that many people live in Romans 7 and think this is the normal Christian life. The bad things I do not do, I do, and the good thing I don't want to do, uh, I do not do, and so on and so on. Um, and, and it was my life in many ways, but then I saw it's not the normal Christian life. The normal Christian life is what we read in Romans 6, freedom from sin. Sin has no dominion over you. You're not under the law, but under grace. And, and suddenly I saw 
but I'm free. I'm free from sin. I don't have to sin. I'm not on the law anymore. And it became a big, big revelation for me. And I stood up in my office and like, but I'm free. I'm fr but then I don't have to sin anymore. And I have repentance for, when I got saved, I repented from the big sins. But now it was like there was still a few things that was keeping on to me. But suddenly it was gone. And I felt I'm totally free. Free not to sin. And it was like a new beginning in my life. And it was like, it was so radical that to be honest, I was not sure if I really was safe before. When I look back the first six years, because it, it, it was so life changing, like the first time, first time I got saved. It was so life changing and something new happened to me. And I started one day to write down a lot of revelation I got out of that and the teaching. And, and then I said, but, but what shall I do with this? It's, it's teaching for Christians. I've never teach anybody. I was going out in man's life, but I've never seen any fruits. And I'm not, what shall I do with this? And then God spoke to me very clear. Not like a voice, but still, he said, Tom, write a book. And like, what? Write a book. And I turned and looked up like, what? But God, I cannot read. I'm not, have you forgot? I'm, I'm not good at school. I've never written a book in my whole life. I only read one book in my whole life before I became a Christian. I, I'm not good at it. And he said, write a book. I gave you one chapter each day, son, that you should not write. I'm like, okay. And there I had two weeks that really impacted my life, where every day he gave me one chapter. I woke up in the morning, prayed for an hour, spent time in the Word, and then I wrote a chapter. And then when I was finished with that chapter, scriptures came to me. I meditated on the scriptures the whole day, woke up next morning, prayed for hours, sat down and write the next chapter. And then the new scripture came to me. And I had like three weeks and two weeks where do, 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 do. And, and, and it was so radical and it, it, it was really powerful. And suddenly I had a book. I've never been able to read anything in my whole life, write anything in my whole life. And suddenly I had a book. And like, I want to get it out, but suddenly I understood that I'm just a big boy who wants to listen to me. I don't have any fruits. I, I'm, I'm young. I'm in the middle of the 20s, like 23 at that time, I think, 24. But who wants to listen to me? And then I, it came to me again. God said, wait. Wait will publish that book until I say, now it's time. And when it's time, because from now on, he said, wait will publish that book until I say it's time. From now on, I'm going to confirm this word in your life. And when it's time, people want to read your book. And I said, okay. And I took the book, put it away. And from that day on, I started to see the power of God. When the first week was over, I've seen the first three people heal. I started to see people heal. I started to see people set free. I started to see people born again. And when that year was over, from I started to fast and said, God, I give you one more year. And when that year was over, the first six years, I have healed nobody, led nobody to Christ, cast no demons out, nobody baptized the Holy Spirit. But when the next year was over, I've seen 150 people healed. I have led 10 people to Christ who are still following God today and was life was changed. And from that moment on, I started to see God open the door. I was on TV, I prayed for the sake. I started to see a lot of amazing things God did. And, and the, the book was laying on my shelf for three years. But three years after, one day I was in prayer and God spoke to me again. Top, now it's time to get the book out. <sighs> I'm like, whoa. And I almost forgot all about it in that period. And I went into my wife and said, God had just said, it's time. Oh, because we have, it had been a big thing. And, and suddenly I could get it out and it's the sound doctrine. And, and we got the book out as a prophetic book. And, and now people want to read it because I had the testimony, God spoke to me how I should get the book out, like write a forward and then write after word afterwards. And it's not like when I tell the story, it's not like I'm hearing God speaking every day. Uh, it's not like I'm going around and when I hear people say God speak, God speak, I'm often skeptical because it seems like they're hearing voices all the time. I'm not hearing voices. I never heard like a big voice, like with an audible voice. But I heard a few times that I felt it really strong. And I act on it, and I've seen it is God. Um, and then my life changed, and I started to, to travel around and do big meetings and, and become an evangelist in, in the old way still. And, and I saw the power of God. And, but after a short time in, in that, I, I got frustrated one more time. 
because I was happy for my own life now because I saw fruits. But what about all the rest? They are also called to bear fruits. And I felt feel it was so hard to, to give what I had to other people. It was so hard to really make disciples. And we got rid of everything. We threw the TV out as the first one, and we tried to throw things out in the house because we didn't want so much. We don't want to have a lot of things that's distracting us. Uh, and in the, we ended up at one time with three kids in a small basement. And we were living there a very, very, very simple life where our friends and family was looking at us like we were crazy. I saw everything from outside. I saw how crazy it was what we are doing and still call it church. I saw that it had nothing to do with New Testament church. The pastor, the, the church building, the meetings, the programs, the tithing, the, the, the Bible's colleagues, the education, it had nothing to do with church. And, and I'm like, we have nothing to lose. We have lost our friends, we have lost our money, we have lost our network. We have nothing to lose, so nothing can be taken away from us. So now we just say it as it is. And we start to do it. And from that moment on, it just starts to explode. Jesus said, every branch on him who do not bear fruit, he's going to cut off. And every branch who bear fruit, he's going to prune it. So it's going to bear even more fruit.